So we see that <coughs> in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, there's something that happened. There was a gap. So then there was darkness upon the face of the deep. So this black thing here is darkness. And you know what? I should have pushed blue for water, not black. So let's do this. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. So we see that darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, in this darkness, why did it happen? Because jump to Revelation 22. Revelation 22. There's something to understand. God, he did not originally <coughs> make intend darkness to happen for his creation. In his creation, in this Amen. perfect world, there is no darkness. But why is it that all of a sudden in Genesis 1, 1 through 2, there was darkness and waters? Because something happened. Originally, when God creates a perfect world, a perfect universe, there is no night. All right, so we're going to look at Revelation, and I believe it's going to be either chapter 21 or it will be chapter 22. But in the verse, the Bible says that when he creates a new heaven and new earth and creates this whole complete perfect state, <coughs> you'll notice that Revelation chapter 21 and verse 25, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be what? No, no, night. no night there. And then look at chapter 22, verse 5. So it's two chapters. Chapter 22, verse 5. And there shall be what? No, no night, night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. Now jump back to Genesis 1. Genesis 1. So see, that's the important note. The important note to understand is that in Revelation chapter 22 and 21, what God intended was for to be no night at all. That's God's perfect creation. Why? Because God is light, and in That's Him right. is no darkness. Amen. So in Genesis 1, there was no night. It was complete, bright light. It was God. But then, look at verse 2, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So why was there darkness all of a sudden? Because of what Lucifer and the fallen angels did. Now, I would recommend people to watch my video called The Gap Theory. The Gap Theory. That will explain more convincingly that there were fallen angels and Lucifer who got involved before Adam and Eve. And that's why uh, the Lord, he sent darkness and then he drowned out the whole universe with a universal flood. This darkness, when the Lord sent it, what's very interesting is that when this darkness was created, who was it created by? It was created by God. Because in the book of Isaiah, the Bible says that God creates light and darkness. The Bible also says that uh, he creates good and evil. Okay, does this mean that God creates sin itself? No, sin is done by the moral action of the people. However, because of the moral action of the person that committed the sin, the Lord has to set proper judgment, proper context and setting that will fit in their environment. Because in God's creation, He does not tolerate sin. So He has to put sin at a certain location where it's appropriate for sin. Hence, He created hell. See? So He created hell... Uh, place like that, a place of torment and outer darkness, why? That's where sin goes. That's where Satan and his fallen angels go into, and the devils. So God, he created the darkness because it was intended for Satan and the fallen angels. That's why what's really interesting, I don't know if this is just coincidence, and if uh, Brother Tom can see in the camera if I'm out of angle on both sides, but if you look at the, some shows where they display fallen angels, not angels, but fallen, what do they color their wings as? Black. Dark. Dark. Very interesting. What happened to the fallen angels when the Lord drowned, uh, drowned out the universe with the universal flood? He sent what? Darkness. 
darkness. Now, I don't teach that fallen angels' wings are black. I don't teach that. But there might be something to it. There might be something to it where they may have gotten the idea from. Because there was no doubt darkness spread, and this darkness did affect them. There is no doubt about that. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Look at several verses right here. Look at Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6. Hence, when we sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, by Martin Luther, what did he write in, the, in one verse? The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. This darkness affected them. And that's why Satan and his minions, we, they <coughs> take advantage of the darkness. Darkness, you'll find out most of the time, is not a good thing. Actually, darkness is not a good thing at all in the Bible. It is not a good thing at all. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. So we're not wrestling against mortal physical world, right? At the beginning of verse 12. What are we fighting against? But against principalities, against power, against the who? Rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not talking about humans. This is talking about Satan's minions here. And God calls them the rulers of the darkness of this world. Isn't it interesting? It's in Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of men, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. See, this darkness affected them. So because this darkness affected them, Satan, he wants to take advantage of this. Let's see a lot of things that be, can be connected with Satan. Satan, in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says he is known to have the power of death at the book of Hebrews. Look at Psalms 23. Psalms chapter 23. So let's see some several examples here concerning darkness. The first thing is death. Death. Look at the book of Psalms chapter 23. How many of you know that famous verse? Yea, though I walk through the valley of what? Shadow of death. Why is it that when you die, it all turns what? Dark. And then all of a sudden, it turns to light after that. Well, let's look at Psalms chapter 23. Look at verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear what? No evil. See how it's connected right there? That's interesting. How death is connected with evil. Isn't it very appropriate then when the Bible says death is cast into the lake of fire? Amen. At the book of Revelation chapter 20. And hell is known to be a place of what? Go to Matthew. Go to the book of Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. What is hell likened to in the Bible? It is likened to a place of outer darkness. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Matthew chapter 8, verse 12. So we see right here that the first case is it's likened to death. We see right here, the second case, it's going to be likened to hell. Let's look at the book of Matthew, chapter 8. Notice what the Word of God quotes right here. At verse 12... But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into what? Outer darkness. Now notice that it ends right here. Your King James Bible, okay, King James Bible ends with a colon here. Why would it do that? Because there's something about this darkness that makes you what? There shall be what? Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now isn't it interesting when God drowned out, okay, drowned out the universe, destroyed this destruction feeling is connected with darkness. So it sounds like then you're saying that the feeling of destruction, where you feel the pain, you feel the destruction, you can, the, there is such a darkness where you can feel it. Go to Exodus 10. Exodus chapter 10. When they burn in hell, there's something about this darkness where they can feel it. That's why the Bible says there shall be weeping and oh, what? Good. Gnashing yeah, of that's teeth. Good. That's good. Gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Can you actually feel it, though, the darkness? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Look at the book of Exodus, chapter 10. Amen. 
Let's look at verse 21. Look, man, don't mess with God. That's good advice, okay? Do not mess with God. When God judges you with something, He's going to judge you with something that can really, really hurt. So notice right here that darkness, you can feel it. Darkness can be felt. Can be felt. Look at the book of Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10. And then we're going to look... Exodus 10, verse 21, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. So this is one of the ten plagues of Egypt. Why is darkness a plague if darkness is not a big deal? If darkness is not such a destructive force? Darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which what? May be felt. And in verse 22, notice it says, There was a what? Thick darkness, that heaviness. Perhaps, perhaps, there was a little bit of weeping, gnashing of teeth, perhaps, when this plague was sent down upon Egypt. Why is it that's why people will say, are you scared of the dark? Are you scared of the dark? Why? It's connecting with evil forces. But that's why it makes sense in the conspiracy realm where they talk about shadow people. What is shadow people? Because in the middle of the night when you're sleeping, I don't know if some of you are having like little bit of thoughts now, but have you ever been through one of those nights where you saw like a dark figure and it was like right, standing right by your bedside? Those, uh, those are known now throughout some people who witnessed those kind of experiences and they said that they suffered sleep paralysis. A lot of them said that they, su they could not get up out of bed, they could not say anything once they saw the dark figure right in front of their bedside. There's a, there's a saying, there's, there are those experiences from people who suffer them. Those are called shadow people, actually. Now, of course, we can't say for every experience they went through that we can say that they're legit, but we do believe this. They call them shadow people, but are they people or are they what? Isn't that what Ephesians 6 said? No. Ephesians 6, rulers of the darkness of this world are connected. You know what's also very interesting? Look at the book of, uh, I don't know from memory, but maybe I can find it right here. But this is very interesting. I want you to jump to John 1, John 1, and then I'll find the other one at the book of Exodus, and then we'll close. That way I can jump to the next teaching. Uh, this is interesting stuff. I might do another teaching on the darkness. I might do another teaching about the darkness. But look at John chapter 1. That's why Jesus Christ is so important. Do you know why Jesus Christ is important? Because He is the light. What does this mean at verse 4? Look at verse 4. In Him was life, and the light was the light of men. So that's Jesus Christ. He is the light. And the light, look at this, shineth in darkness, and the what? Darkness comprehended. This darkness has feelings. This darkness is personal. It's a person. The darkness comprehended it not. So who could this be referring to? It could be referring to lost sinners who are in darkness, or it could refer to devils as well. Or it could be referring to both. Because generally, that's what they are. Devils and uh, sinners who are without, who are without God, they're in the same darkness. Didn't you know that? Why? Ephesians chapter 2. You were the children of what? Darkness. Oh, that's you good. walked according to the uh, darkness. How about that? See, you're all in the same boat. Man, pastor, you're scaring me. Good. That's why you need to get saved. Amen. You need to get saved Amen. in Jesus Christ because you are a part of the darkness. And you need the light because God is light and in Him is what? No darkness. That's why let Him shine forth the light in your life. And then He can get rid of the darkness for you. And what's really interesting is that some people might say, but doesn't the Bible say where it talks about God uh, is in the shadow of the darkness? Or when people come to meet God, they go through darkness? Yeah, you know why? Because when you go through the universe at the darkness out there. See, that's why there's darkness in the universe. 
Why is that? Because of his judgment. If you look at day number two, when he created the firmament and divided the waters from the waters, when he uh, above the waters above the firmament and the waters underneath the firmament, but it didn't say what he did with that darkness. He just separated the darkness from the light. That's all he said. So where did that darkness go? Right in between right there. The firmament created it. The waters above, waters below. And the darkness in between. That is your darkness. That's why you get the idea of not just shadow people, but what? UFOs. UFOs. Something's flying in the regions out there. Those aliens. Why? They're devils. They're devils. They all inhabit through the darkness. Another thing concerning this darkness, so then that light was separated from the darkness. Where did that light go? Simple. That's God. Because God is light. In Him is no darkness. That's why, why did God create lights in the firmament? Why did He do that? Darkness. See that? He had to put lights in the firmament right there. So Satan, he is of darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. But it's only, how do you hit the light, folks? Where do you hit the light? Light is God, right? God is light. So he is the light right here. If you're going to hit that light, you're going to hit God, you have to first go through what? The darkness. You have to travel through out there through the firmament, through the universe, to hit that light, God. That's why in death, you have to go through the darkness first where your eyes shut close, and then you see light. It's a spiritual realm as well. That's why in the Bible, why did Moses, his face shone? Even though the Bible says that there was thick darkness covering God. Because you have to go through the darkness first to see that contrast of the bright light, which is God behind it. I was going to show you this verse of Exodus, but we won't turn there for time's sake. The Bible says when he became a pillar of fire, you know what the verse says? It was darkness to the Egyptians, but light mm, to yeah. his people. Ooh, yeah, that's good. That's real good. That's why there's darkness accompanying God. You know why? You can't comprehend the light. You're of darkness. The darkness comprehended it. Nah. Interesting, isn't it? Who says the Bible is boring? The Bible is a boring book. Remember that. The Bible is boring. You know, I'm just some whack. I'm just some quack. I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, so we'll just close it right here.